You're watching KYOT Coyote. Return to Castle Wolfenstein, powered by the Quake 3 Arena engine, has a mod named Freetsbot, where you can play with bots in multiplayer maps. Which means Wolfenstein fans can replay the legendary and memorable Beach Invasion map to include all of the other maps with a handful of bots. This particular Beach Invasion map was done right by Grey Matter Studios, the developer. This game was released in the fall of 2001 for Microsoft Windows before it was ported to the original Xbox and PlayStation 2 in 2003. Before Medal of Honor captivated PC and console players with their immersive D-Day campaign levels, Wolfenstein players were blasting their speakers to this fantastic multiplayer map. I believe even with today's games, there is a lot to take into consideration from how well this map implemented its objectives, scaled to its size and gameplay mechanics. Allied forces are tasked with rushing the beach to gain their way into the first bunker. Once captured, they will complete one of their objectives. Two MG42s placed inside can make this difficult. Allies spotting a weak point in the seawall have brought enough dynamite to blast their way into the base. If the Allies are successful, this will allow for a wide, rapid assault further inside their enemy's controlled base, with total access to the entire trench line. A trench line inside a base means multiple access points. This is where the map morphs from medium to long range engagements into point blank combat in tight rooms and corridors. The Allies' further objective is to attain war documents and reach the transmitter room to communicate sensitive information back to Allied command. The war documents, however, are found further inside the base. Therefore, allies have to make a mad dash back upstairs to transmit. If the allies reach the transmitter room with the war documents after destroying the seawall and capturing the bunker, they will win. Being methodical with various classes can help you take over the base. Selecting Lieutenant will allow you to call in air and mortar support. And this is where one of the coolest visual effects is on display in this game, especially for its time back in 2001. The continuous blue smoke is an indicator of an allied airstrike, whereas the quick pop of blue smoke is an indicator of an allied mortar strike called in by a Lieutenant. Mortar strikes are called upon through using binoculars. Watch out for the access force trying to snipe or call in a strike on you. Once you see the pop of blue smoke, you've successfully called in a mortar strike. Thanks. A cooldown timer will initiate in the lower right corner of the screen, so you know when it's time to find another location to bring the rain. I enjoy seeing the blue and the red smoke from both teams interlacing one another in the air. It's a cool visceral detail. The only way to blast through the seawall and into the bunker is to place concentrated TNT nearby and wait for the timer to go off. Enemy engineers can disable the TNT, so don't set it and forget it. The AI will select various weapons, such as the sniper, in order to protect allies and the planted TNT from a distance, which means you also have access to various weapons when you select the soldier class. As allies have only so many locations to snipe from, watch out for counter sniping from the various bunker windows. It's not exactly easy to snipe on this map as an allied soldier, and the recoil through the scope is pretty hilarious. You're welcome. I thought my character fell off the hill for a second. There's a scene in Saving Private Ryan where Upham is looking through a scope as his team assaults a machine gun nest. This reminds me very much of it. Now the heavier and more powerful weapons you select, the slower you will run with them. Taking out a grenade, a knife, or a pistol will help you expedite. Great. 
Enemies can be revived by medics unless you reduce them to giblets. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks. You're welcome. Or give them extra attention. Medic! Great shot. Thanks. You're welcome. But leaving enemies to call for medics can save you time in pursuit to the documents and even distract enemy medics to go revive them instead of pursuing you. When it comes to the document room, you can sneak your way inside to avoid taking the common routes, but watch out, as the AI can take up corners just like real players would. Let's go. Help, medic. I'm on Although in this game, it's just too much fun when you go all out loud. You're welcome. Thanks. You're welcome. Hold your fire. Even your allies act like real players. Help! Medic! I'm a medic. Thanks. It's great when you rush into the base with a team consisting of a medic or two. Medics are armed with Thompsons, which allows them to be quick on their feet. Speed is the key. At the end of a round, no matter which side or no matter the map and game type you choose to play, there is a sentimental moment that this mod captures very well. That is, the bots will play in-game dialogue that real life players would initiate for fun by pressing a button this is what you would hear at the end of each round. Playing as the Axis powers is engaging as your MG42s can eliminate opponents quickly. However, your MG42s can be disabled, so you know lieutenants are calling airstrikes and mortars on them. The MG42, located directly in front of the weakened seawall, has an effective field of fire in the path of oncoming attackers, but you're exposed if the right side bunker is taken over. You and all of the bots have access to the devastating flamethrower. Get toasty. The enemy holds the fire. The enemy is weakened. Fire in the hole. Infa, medic, the medic. Fire in the hole. The MP40 carries two more rounds in the magazine than the Thompson. Those two could be your saving grace. This is the FG-42, my favorite weapon in the game. E-45 
Each multiplayer map in Return to Castle Wolfenstein is packed with interesting scenarios. The allied forces are not always the ones attacking. And when I say scenarios, I don't mean the objectives, because the objectives really just surround the fact that one team has to blow something up, or gain access to a control point, or steal a MacGuffin, and the other team defends all of that from happening. The scenarios are what the map entices the players to do, and how they traverse the map itself. Therefore, the map design is what's intriguing given all of the inherent gameplay elements. This gondola makes for an interesting scenario to traverse the map undetected and protected from straight bullets. If you are patient, an MG42 is available to cover your teammates as they push through into the structure. Let's go. But if you're even more patient, you can ride it up to the structure, potentially getting behind the enemy's back. For the time in 2001, the lighting and atmosphere was outstanding, while being a spooky game. And nowadays, Return to Castle Wolfenstein still has that eerie undertone, similar to that of Valve games. Speaking of which, this and Counter-Strike were some of the games I'd go back and forth playing online during those summer nights of 2004 when I got Xbox Live. It was incredible to play Beach Invasion with other players after playing the Medal of Honor Frontline D-Day level countless of times, despite the restricted path-following AI. But other than Wolfenstein's Beach Invasion map, there are additional maps that skew from the bombastic outdoor environment and evoke an unsettling and immersive stealthy gameplay style, even in multiplayer. You could even peek around corners in those quiet moments. While this mod has been around for years, it's a fantastic alternative when you want to jump back into these awesome maps in this incredible game and play locally on your own PC instead of testing the waters with a lobby that has sporadic connection and is not filled with players. These bots are skilled and will remind you of players in pub lobbies. This is not the only mod, there's even a mod that remasters this entire game. In any case, it's nice to still enjoy what this game offers, and I look forward to seeing a future game implement a D-Day invasion scenario that is memorable into its multiplayer. We may have seen D-Day plenty of times as single player levels in video games, but I believe it's time to see it done right in a new game for multiplayer. And Return to Castle Wolfenstein is a great source to start from. Thanks. The link to download this mod is in the description. And if you like this video, go ahead and check out my other videos.